Should we talk about icons? Because that's part of the workflow we've been talking about. Yes. So when, whenever we've designed the icon, we've realized that uh, we, we can't just take a snapshot of the of the swords. You saw even, even when they're blown up really big on the screen, some of the large broadswords end up getting cut off, which is no good. So we, we need a way of uh, being able to artistically design icons so they match the sword type yep. but in such a way that materials can be swapped out on those as well so they can be recolored so they work as icons and that led to me playing with the image class which i haven't really played with before and the documentation tells you, you know how to use it but the, i haven't found any good tutorials so what i've found is i can take two different icons so in this case, let's say the blade and the hilt. I can say, make the image the first of those, make it the blade. Now blend it with the second and move the second to this position. Yep. But before you do those, recolor both images. So apply color here, apply color there. And that kind of works. Um, and there's a couple of different ways you can do that. You can do, you know, for every pixel, so do x four uh, x four y, um, or four x in width, four y in height. Uh, go through every pixel, and if it's not alpha, recolor it. Or we could do multiply it by, which might work better, but can also look yeah. a little blurrier. Um, but it, it, we now have a situation where, if we're procedurally generating these weapons, and we want players to want to pick up lots of weapons that they'll never use, but might want to sell. And the player needs to be able to see in an instant which is the one I'm keeping, what's the valuable one, what's yep. good for this situation. Yes, so we, we realized very quickly that if you picked up five broadswords and you had to mouse over each one and wait until a tooltip comes up, that's not a great player experience. You should ideally be able to look at the weapon and know what at least what type of weapon it is. We're not going to have levels of weapon, so there's not going to be like you know, a level 5 broadsword, a level 14, a level 30 broadsword. Sorry, you can't use that one yet because of reasons. Um, <laughs> even though you could use every well, earlier one. Have, you can't use this class of, of weapon yes. because you're a different class. But we don't, we don't have any distinction in level of weapons in our game. So um, you should be able to look at our weapons and know, oh, that one's a, a, go a, go a gold and steel one is a great example. Well, here's another example of why this is important. Important. like you need to see it very quickly if you're playing a mage you have access to all these different ones that have different spells not mm -hmm. every spell is going to be good in every situation so if you suddenly find yourself surrounded by skeletons and the ones you have is no good being able to get into your inventory and find the one you want and swap it out before you get killed is a much better experience than going well there's nothing i can do because it's going to take me 20 minutes to find the right one <laughs> hold on a moment <laughs> nope Nope. <laughs> uh, so so it, that, that begs the question whether whether we also need to have a look at the UI and potentially have more hot items so that uh, a character can press one, two, three, four, five, all the way to... I mean, suddenly it's... It, 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 I mean, it, that, that was a decision we made the, in the other direction earlier. Yeah. But do we need to revisit it? The more you have to revisit these, the harder it gets. Yes. You should like, oh, but... But... Because even changing these weapons from the way we had it to procedural is adding so many can of cattley fish worm ball backs, ball yeah. waxes, um, that is actually taking weeks just to get the thing yeah. working in a way that feels good. You know, you can't just go, okay, we'll just change the way the weapons work. Everything's fine. Like, no, they're not. There's bugs everywhere. Yeah, you, right you, now we only have the one-handed weapons anyway, but still. Yeah, you often cannot just substitute one thing for another and expect it to work unless it is a one-to-one, -one, which it never is. Hmm. Yeah. I, I, th I think when it comes to the, the icons, and like we are saying, because we've kind of made this ish decision on the wands being a certain type of wand, meaning a certain type of spell... I think you would want a hot bar capable of, you know, queuing up the four four good ones that you've got. So I'm thinking, potentially, the blade or, or the top of the weapon, so the axe head, the sword blade, or the top of the wand, is the key, right? That's the thing that people are going to notice is physically yeah. different. Yeah. So if each of those have two materials... Then we can sort it out from there. 
Yeah. Right. Um, and there's a couple of ways we could do that. We could just do a simple, but slightly, but pretty inefficient, go through the entire image, change all the pixels by color. I mean, that essentially can be generated at the beginning of a playthrough. But it's still slower, yeah. right? Yeah, um, much slower than just, oh, we'll load up these 15 assets, boom. So always that that's another do downside we have of each of those generation. each of the potential colors pre-made and just pick them in which case the file size is much bigger the load time is much bigger but maybe it's the best solution like it's one of those things we're going to have to play with yeah because it turns out procedurally generated ui is something neither of us have played with watch this space <laughs> procedurally each, generate everything each blade slash wand toppy bit being its own icon and the only part of the icon we care about seems more manageable than trying to fit the whole weapon in there uh, it's just not possible with some weapons because they're too big you, i mean you could make an argument for each image is actually its own viewport that you're dragging that is a 3d representation of, the, of but no when you've got 20 of these in your bag i i dread to think what that's going to do to the to the running of the game and it's going to look terrible yeah i mean it does it in a slower game where perhaps the opening up the UI pauses the game, then and the UI is most of the screen. Yes, where you open it up and you've got full screen character here, a, a huge chunk for your weapon, and then like your inventory over here. That 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 makes a big difference compared to a more minimal style. Mm. And, and not saying, of course, that one is better or worse than the other. Uh, the, the truth is that that they, they work in different situations. So there's something I used to tell my, my technical theater students. The wrong decision is the one you didn't make. And what I mean by that is not that if you've made a decision, it's right. What I mean is if you don't think about something, if you don't actually think about it and think what's best to make a decision, that's wrong. But if it's a case of which of these two is better, by thinking about it, you'll find the right solution. Right, the aesthetic of the game, the feel of the game, the player experience, all these things will yeah. give you the answer you need. So in our case, I would opt towards a stylized, clean iconography style of UI, yeah, because it fits this this clean, no textures image we've got. Definitely. But if we're doing a very gritty CRPG, isometric, top down, you know, lots of, lots of tiny little stats you want to compare, you need a, a lot of screen space for that. And potentially the ability to see each weapon in 3D in a preview window before you even touch it. So, horses for courses, I think the shorthand for that is. That's right. You could bring a horse to a course, but you can't change his pajamas. It's a new one on me, but we'll go with it. <laughs> I was a professor. 